right, day two. Now I'm doing the wiring today. Ran out of time yesterday, so we're gonna give this another shot. Let's go over some of my gear here. I'm doing for wiring, so I do my own wiring. I have built up a bit of an electrical kit, so this is a hydraulic crimping tool. Um, it's got this off uh, Amazon, I think it was. So it has all the dies and everything. This is good for your um, solar crimp connectors and your battery lug terminals, which I'll be using some of those. So that's out there. And just see in my box here, side cutters, crimpers, wire strippers, some wire here that I'll need, cable ties, all my connectors, um, heat shrink here, red and black, which I'll be using today. Um, down there is my butane soldering iron, some electrical tape. I've got grommet kits and stuff as well. That's all right. Um, so for the wire, I'm using 8 BNS twin core, but I'm going to be stripping out the uh, the red and the black from it. It's a bit of a, a bit of a waste, but that's all I've got to work with today. And then I've just got some um, five mil um, split tubing. Hopefully it'll fit in there. Might be a bit tight, but we'll see how we go. So what I'm going to be doing. Uh, oh yeah, also um, over here. I've got your bolt down um, fuses, 50 amp. So you should run, the, run these on each side of the battery as close as you can. So I'm gonna put one, one about here. So I've got to run into the terminal and then I'm just gonna run around over the back. So I've got to cut all those cable ties off from the previous owner. And uh, I'll probably do the same thing. I'll just uh, mount it down here. Now I'm going to zip tie them. I was going to screw them to the battery box uh, surrounds here, but I've decided uh, I'm just going to zip tie them for the moment um, because it's quite tight in here, as you can see. I don't have a lot of room, which is kind of a pain in the backside, especially with the, with the uh, air box here. Makes it hard. And uh, trying to get the fuses out if I need to, I wouldn't be able to get uh, ratchet spanner or anything down in there. I could have mounted it off of here and come back around in there, but again, temporarily I'll put it here. I can always rerun that wire later, um, but it'll just make it a little bit easier to get to. So that's the plan for today. Um, yeah, we will get to it and, uh, and um, yeah, get started. I'll take you along. All right, so uh, first things first, I'm going to work out how much cable I need. Now I should have enough here. I should have more than enough here. I'll sit that like that and I'll loosely run it around the engine bay. Just so I can work out exactly how much I need. I don't have to go far, which is good. Wound out way more than I need. All right. Let's wind this back in. So I don't want to waste wiring. Because this stuff is not cheap. have a little bit that's all right a little bit of there little bits fine oh, so what I'll do now I'll cut that down with me uh, cutters here and 
and I'll cut that around about there. Nice and straight, done. So now the next job is I actually have to cut that sheathing off and separate the positive from the negative. Do it on the step, be a bit safer than doing it with my hand. Just run it down here. Usually I would have uh, individual cable, but I've also noticed on the car that the uh, fridge wiring is inadequate for what's been run there. So I will be um, changing that out. Be another thing I'll have to do before I do the rear, wire, rear wiring. I would probably suggest to use a Stanley knife rather than a razor blade, but it's doing the job. Yeah, just keep cutting. Be careful you don't cut into the, uh... oh boy that was close. Be careful you don't cut into the uh... wiring underneath. So you just want to run down the middle of these if you're doing this. So now I should just be able to now peel that. And you just want to keep peeling it. So once you get it started, you can just rip it out like so. Look close to that one. It is powder coated on the inside so it doesn't rub. And done. Um, I've now separated the wiring. So what I'll do, I'll uh, get my um, split tubing run the split tubing and then I will uh, show you how I'm going to be crimping the terminals on there with the crimper and um, yeah I won't bore you with running the split tubing on here it's pretty that's pretty straightforward so I won't need the black for the moment that can sit over there and yeah we'll keep going all right so I've run the split tubing my hands are very sore right now so I will need to cut this down so I can add in the um, extra couple of battery lugs for the fuse holder. But that's the majority of it there, so it's not bad. Um, and so I always leave a bit of an end open so I can strip it and crimp it and all that stuff. So I'll uh, get the crimper set up and, and we'll look at hooking this end up into the uh, intervolt unit and then I'll run it around work out where I'm going to put the fuse holder and then I'll um, cut it, terminate that end with another battery lug to, uh, to suit the um, fuse holder, hook the fuse holder up, um, or work out the other end of it, sorry, and the length needed, then I'll just cut that down, I'll have a little bit left over and, um, and that's that side done to the auxiliary battery. But yeah, I'll, um, Grab my strippers, wire strippers out. <coughs> Sorry. Pretty straightforward. It doesn't get stuck in there. Maybe a little bit more. So, just um, probably go this way. It'll be easier. Just to show you. Just stripping it when it wants to work. Try that again. Nope, gone as far as I can. All right, anyway, strip the end. I'm not sure if it's gonna show up. So yeah, strip the end like that. We'll grab a battery lug. I'll just make sure I got the right size for these actually, before I do anything I should do. I hope so. 
So this is the, uh, the fuse holder. Hmm, these might be a bit big. I might have not got what I needed at the moment. We'll see. See if it fits. Hey, it'll go. So generally with these, you wouldn't run it that way. You would flip it around and they sit in the groove. And then the, um, the fuse sits underneath it. That way there, when you crimp it down, um, then yeah, they, they sit in nice and flush. You can go the other way. That would just sit up a bit, which isn't a huge deal. You know, that'll still work, which is not bad, which I still, I might even do that way anyway, but um, yeah, around that side, that just sits a bit nicer in there. I'll decide when I, when I put it on. So yeah, it's it there, pretty straightforward. I'll get the crimper sorted. I'll whack that on and I'll uh, heat shrink it on there and, and we'll be done on that end anyway. All right, so this is my hydraulic crimper. I've got the uh, connector in there. So all you do, get your wire. Poke it in the end and then pump the handle. It's easy as that until it crushes down. Now what I like to do for a little bit of extra security on these is I like to crush this end down as well and I have to rotate it around a couple of times, it just gets it nice and flat. I would normally suggest putting a, I'll turn this around, it's a bit awkward that way. Yeah, I would actually suggest putting your um, heat shrink on prior to doing this, but I can slide it in the other end. It's not a problem. And yeah, this will shift around a little bit, but that's okay. I will show you the end product when I'm done. The reason I do this is it just gets the uh, sheath to clamp down a bit tighter. Onto the unit. And this is the most time consuming thing, is doing this. Yeah, these, uh, these crimpers run at about 60 bucks. From memory. So just to show you, there we go, I've crimped it down. That ain't coming off at all. Um, so generally, yeah, I'll grab some heat shrink, put it over it, and, and uh, seal it down. Now, I don't know if I can move the heat shrink up. I will try. Heat shrink. This sh all right. I'm now going to put some um, heat shrink over this section here on the end and over the uh, cable there and I'll show you when I'm done that. Time to heat shrink. I see how I go, this stuff is a little bit big but, but it is also dual wall heat shrink. Now dual, dual wall heat shrink will shrink down um, to a third of its size. So it looks like it's actually working. Obviously, red heat shrink for power, like the earth. Just so you know what wires what.
and done. Blow that coal. And then I'll hook it up onto the intervolt unit. So there you go. Pretty straightforward. I'll probably, I'll usually do it a bit shorter, but I kind of misjudged the cable length on that one, but that's okay. That's gonna be in the intervolt unit anyway. So there you go. Pretty straightforward. That's how you'll, you terminate a uh, battery lug terminal onto some wire. And um, yeah, I will now go and grab some more tools and I'll let this cool down while I'm doing that. And then we'll start running this off of the intervolt unit and I'll show you that one. All right, so on this one, it's gonna take the uh, screw out for the auxiliary. Cause that's the one we're gonna be adding the wiring to. work over there there we go right so what I'm gonna do I'm actually gonna come out this side here just because if I go out that side then I gotta loop back around just a bit neater here so this is as easy as it is to wire this thing in guys no soldering required which is why I love the intervolt unit. It's super easy to work with. Probably should grab a, flat, a Phillips head screwdriver. That's it, that's all there is to it. So when you put the cover on, That's all you see. You see the wiring coming out of there. So I'm gonna go there. I'll run it down along the firewall on the other side. Work out where I'm gonna put the um, fuse. Give it a bit of a snip. Terminate the other end. Put the fuse block in. Then I gotta work out the other side of that to the battery. Same deal with this. So mine will be a lot shorter run on this side here. It'll be a short bit of wire. And another short bit of wire with a fuse in between. And um, once that's done, then I'll show you how to program the unit, um, which is pretty straightforward. So I'll come back to you when I've uh, got to the fuse side and got that all in on the auxiliary. All right, so what I've done now is I've run the wiring, I haven't cut off any of the cable ties yet, replaced what was up there to tie it back in and tie it back to where it was. I'll come over here and show you from over here as well. So that side it comes along here, goes back down here, put it coming along. Now I'm just going to work out up here where I'm going to mount the um, the fuse. I'm thinking probably around about here, and that way I can still get the uh, crimping tool in to uh, terminate the end of that cable. So once I do that, then it's a matter of then doing the other side cutting off the excess and I can probably use some of that on the uh, on the feed for the other for the main battery so um, yeah pretty straightforward heaps of cable ties have come off of here though like as you can see I had a few little mishaps that I missed the steel pipe it was tied to but yeah there's cable ties everywhere so anyway I'm going to uh, add that fuse in and then I'll probably start on the other side, work out where I'm gonna put the fuse on that, terminate that cable, and um, we'll make that cable up. And then yeah, it'll be a matter of making the ends to each battery and um, programming it. Pretty easy, it's not a hard job. Um, yeah, it's not a hard job if you know what you're doing. This isn't my first radio, this is about my third um, third, fourth even actually. Had two setups in a 90 series. Um, 
I wired in the one in my cousin's 80 series and now I'm wiring this one in as well as well as removing the red arc system that was in it. Anyway, let's keep going. All right, so I'll show you guys what I'm up to at the moment. Right, I can get the uh, light to block out here, probably not. All right, so I've just got the fuse holder sitting here at the moment. I will zip tie this in, I think. I'm not gonna bolt it down. Uh, I do have bolts and stuff to do it, so I've got that in. It's running across the back, as I showed you before. Now I've started working on the main side of things, so I reckon from here, the main will now, uh, I'm gonna do the fuse probably about here. And then uh, it's just a matter of, once I've got the fuse in here, it's just a matter of running that in to there, making up the other lead. Obviously I've got to do the leads on the opposite sides. And um, yeah, then I can program it. So it's getting there, slowly, slowly. Um, fun job. It's time consuming. But uh, yeah, I reckon it'll come out pretty good. Uh, I'll show you all when I'm done with the wiring in the engine bay here. And then we'll get on to uh, plugging in the display and I'll show you the process on setting your battery type and everything for the Intervolt DCC Pro. All right, so I've done a bit of progress here. So fuses are wired in and I've just zip tied them to the uh, wiring harness for this one. Runs along the back. Over to here, I've just run the earth up the top here, which is fine. And that's for the auxiliary battery. Main battery comes down here. Again, just got the fuse block zip tied there for the moment in here, and then that'll connect onto the uh, battery. So generally what you would do in this instance now is I'll grab the display unit so I can program it. I will take this cover off, hook that up, and then I'll show you the um, programming of the intervolt unit. I have rubbish everywhere. So in the intervolt unit, there is the display. And that display there, um, you mount your vehicle somewhere. I don't know where I'm going to mount it at the moment, so I'm just going to program it and um, and that'll be it. I won't see what the voltage is for the moment, I'm just chasing down a centre console for the 80 series. If I can do that, then I'll have somewhere to put it and that'll be sweet. Otherwise, I'll have to make up a bracket um, and making brackets is not fun. Alright, so in the car, the cable comes through with this piece of plastic, you remove that, it gives you the... Uh, connector here now the connector needs to go to uh, a on the back which is just in there you can just see it so i'm going to plug that in now and just be careful what way you plug it in there is only one way it can go which is good so i'm going to plug that in and i'll make a positive snap when it's in there which it is now all right so that's all that's all plugged in, it's gonna make it hard to see here. I'll pick this up. <clears throat> okay, so, so that's all plugged in now into the A port. Just gonna put the ignition on and then we'll get to programming it. All right, to program this now, I've got it to work. So hold down the OK button until it beeps. Then you get to configure, press up. It'll scroll across the bottom. Show how hard it's easy it's gonna to be to see. You press up. Then once you to select your battery type, so you press, uh, if I can get my finger on it, press OK, and you can cycle through. So it does uh, this one here, does lead acid, AGM, gel, calcium. And LFP BMS, which is your lithium. And back to lead acid. Now I'm running a lead acid at the moment, so press OK. I have no ignition wire. For a smart alternator, you have to run an ignition sensing wire or the inertia module, which you can buy. If you don't want to do that, press OK. Done. So it's all good. And it turns off. So that's now programmed. 
So what I'll do now, I'll unplug it, because I've got nowhere to mount it right now. From there, all I have to do, all I have to do now is hook up the positive to the auxiliary battery and I'm good to go. And my dual battery system is all sorted and done. So, as easy as that guys. Um, if you're wanting to give this a shot yourself, you'll need a few specialist tools. So, my name is the battery lug crimper that I mentioned earlier in the video. Um, just a soldering iron, wire strippers, I've got a cable cutter here just to cut everything straight. Um, the battery lugs themselves. Um, some split tubing, this is 5mm, I'm just using 8 BNS cable which is what they recommend. You can use um, smaller but it's not recommended, it's in the manual though. Um, and here's just my soldering iron which is a butane soldering iron which is right there that little boy to um, melt down your heat shrink. Now this is dual wall heat shrink, if you're wondering. Um, it's got a glue on the inside, so it seals once you heat it up. So it makes it a bit more weatherproof than your normal stuff. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down below. Always makes me jump when it sparks. Always. Probably should have had the ignition off. So it's been about a week and it's all running really well. And Intervolt have asked me to go over a couple of things with this unit for you. So I'm in no way sponsored with these, by these guys at all. This is just a, a courtesy thing. Is that on your unit there's a little silver sticker. I'm just going to cover mine over because. On the unit just here, there is a serial number. Um, they asked me to pass on to write that down in your owner's manual in case you have any technical issues. And um, the other thing was, if you're gonna install it, install it with the um, instructions provided. So as per the instruction manual, um, follow the right rating of wiring, the right fuse types and sizes and you shouldn't have any issues at all so that's why I'd add that on um, yeah any questions leave them in the comments down below and I'll be sure to answer them or I will ask Intervolt for you and I'll get back to you on it thanks guys and have a good one